today on the 700 Club Canada. Looking back on my life, I see him everywhere. His fingerprints were everywhere the whole time, which really helps me wrap my mind around his love too. And even though I felt alone, even though there's been times where I had suicidal thoughts, all those different things, he was there. Every moment of it, he was there. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Lori Hartshorn. Mm -hmm. We are so excited that you have chosen to join us today. Let me ask you a question. Do any of the following words describe how you feel? Moody, irritable, forgetful, depressed? Do you struggle with a lack of concentration or motivation? Maybe increased appetite or reduced sex drive? Mm. All of these symptoms can be traced back to one culprit a lack of sleep. Maybe you struggle with pain. Well, today is your day. It's part four of our Protect Your Sleep series with a mm -hmm. focus on how sleep can help you be pain-free. Now, if you like what you see on today's show and wish you had seen the first three segments of Protect Your Sleep, you can go to 700club.ca. We upload all our previous shows for you to watch, and you might want to share this valuable information on sleep with friends and family, too. I, I know I have, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I'm sharing it. We're both <laughs> jumping in. I'm sharing it with everyone that I know. Now, what you learned through the Protect Your Sleep series could save a life. Here's part four of Protect Your Sleep. Watch. Mm -hmm. Life can be painful. If you've ever stubbed your toe or sprained your ankle, you know what I mean. Yet millions of people suffer with chronic pain. It's more than just bumps and bruises. It's crippling pain that turns life into a daily struggle and robs them of a good night's sleep. The good news is you don't have to let pain keep you from enjoying your life any longer. Here's how. When you are in pain, I mean, your world gets awfully small. People don't realize that as pain becomes chronic, it really alters everything. Sue Hitzman, New York Times bestselling author and creator of The Melt Method, is no stranger to chronic pain. She's lived it. While rising to the top of a promising fitness career, she experienced a little ache that turned her world upside down. My late 20s, I was at the absolute peak of my fitness career. I had a best-selling boot camp video, and one day I woke up and the bottom of my foot hurt me. What started out as being something that was just a little ache in my foot turned into almost entire body-wide pain. I, I really just thought that I had permanently damaged myself. According to the National Institutes of Health, one out of 10 Americans experience chronic pain daily. It affects the lives of more people than diabetes, heart disease, and cancer combined. And it comes with a big price tag, too. It's estimated to cost the U.S. hundreds of billions of dollars in lost workplace productivity. Chronic pain has also given rise to the skyrocketing use of prescription drugs to manage pain. The numbers suggest we are facing a pain pill epidemic. Whether we know it or not, chronic pain is hurting all of us. Chronic pain is not selective. It can happen to anyone at any age. It doesn't matter if you're fit and healthy and eating right. And that's, I think, a, a big wake-up call for a lot of people is even if you do eat right and exercise, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna walk around with no pain. So what does chronic pain look like? It could be anything from nagging back pain that won't stop to intense migraines. Pain becomes chronic when it continues to last and doesn't go away. But before pain turns chronic, there are warning signs. A stiff neck in the morning, or that sudden lower back pain that comes and goes might be a sign you are heading for trouble. Don't ignore it. Pay attention to these little aches and pains and become more aware of what's going on in your body. When we have what we call pre-pain signals and we ignore them like most people do, then you start getting those symptoms that are a little bit more aggressive, joint stiffness, neck pain, and all of these kind of things. And the thing about those types of pains or aches is that they seem so common, people do one of two things. They either take a pain reliever or they ignore it. And that causes more problems. One of these problems is lack of sleep. 
According to the National Sleep Foundation, one out of three Americans loses an average of 20 hours of sleep per week because of pain. If you are not getting the sleep you need, then you're at a greater risk for a long list of diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. There is growing evidence that a lack of sleep could even contribute to Alzheimer's disease. You don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up the next day with a, an accumulation of stress, a backlog of stuck stress that now you're dealing with day in and day out. And it's just time over tension overload. After a while, you are in a state of chronic pain and nothing you do makes a dent. Balancing the demands of life can be stressful. If you feel like there aren't enough hours in the day to keep up, then you're not alone. In a recent Gallup poll, 79% of Americans reported experiencing stress during their day. And if you feel stressed out, so is your body. Stress and pain are connected. If you don't manage the stress in your life, then you're setting yourself up for a vicious cycle of chronic pain. And if you're living in that state of stress all the time, your nervous system kind of thinks that's the balanced place to be at, and it just takes one thing to tip you over the edge, and then you're just down and out, which is what's happening with most people. Slow down and take a moment to relax. Go outside and take a walk with a friend. Write a gratitude list. And thank God for all the good in your life. Remember, managing your stress is another step towards reducing pain in your life. Growing research is suggesting that the source of pain in our bodies is rooted in the connective tissue, or fascia. This long ignored flexible network of tissue is found throughout the body. It was once thought that its only role was to act like a sort of packing material and help give our bodies form and support. But now, research is suggesting that this fluid-filled network of tissue plays an important part in keeping our cells hydrated. There's even the idea that it might also act as a secondary nervous system. These discoveries are changing our understanding of pain and giving us new ways to treat it. So connective tissue is truly the stability system of everything, your skin, bones, nerves, organs, every cell in your body relies on this extracellular matrix to remain stable. But if you kind of think of connective tissue as a fluid-based architectural matrix, like a river, daily living is laying sediment down in this river. And scientifically, we call that cellular dehydration. What Sue learned radically changed her thinking and helped free her from the chronic pain she was experiencing. Today, she is helping others find relief with MELT. This self-treatment program focuses on eliminating stuck stress and keeping the connective tissues healthy. The MELT method is a simple self-treatment technique to educate the general public on how to rehydrate their connective tissue and quiet the stress reflex in the nervous system to essentially deter all of the negative effects that we would associate with daily living and to address the repetitive habits and movements and postures that we have to manage and deal with from day to day and to educate people how to deter accumulative stress from our daily lives. Peggy has been using the MELT method for over 15 years. Now it's just a part of what she does to help ease the aches and pains of everyday life. I um, very often have pains in my fingers um, and in my forearm, particularly because I type and I'm texting and I do all the things that you know, we weren't necessarily designed to do. And I find if I melt my forearm, it literally changes the way my, you know, my entire hand and arm feels for the day, if not for longer. And I've had conversations with my doctor, um, who's a big proponent of working on the fascia and feels that it's a very big part of our structure. And every time I tell her, oh, I did this and melt, I did this, she's like, keep it up. It is absolutely helping you. If we could all learn how to treat the cause of pain becoming chronic and allow our nervous system to adapt to a new, nice environment, I think people would live a more active, healthy, pain-free life. The Bible says in Isaiah, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. 
Let today be your new beginning. Don't let chronic pain interfere with getting a good night's rest or limit your enjoyment of the life God has given you. Lord, that was really insightful. You know, one of the things that I really appreciate, we have this adage, no pain, no gain. And because of that, you know, we have these aches, we have these pains, and we're in such a self-diagnosis generation right now, we don't realize that they can actually be giving us some valuable information. That's right. We, we tend to ignore the pain, right? Pop right. the pill, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Just take the painkiller. And then what I found so fascinating from this research was that actually that it, it kind of cuts off the body from being aware of where the source of the pain is. Is, Correct. Right? And that's, yeah. it's so important to let pain speak to us. It does, you know, and, and it does speak to us and it tells us a whole lot of different things because one of the things that I, I appreciate about this, that it's an indicator of uh, early detection of diabetes. It's also an indicator of uh, uh, high blood pressure, hypertension. And if that is taking place, don't take it for granted. Right. Don't think that, you know what, I'll just grut, gut my way through that. Right. Because what we find is that whole network of that, the fibers and the plasticity that we have are telling us some valuable information. And you know, it's so amazing when you see in scripture, like I know there's people watching that you have not rested, you have not taken care of your health. I mean, I've been there, done that, yeah. <laughs> got the top, got the prize. And it's not worth it because God, he has knit us together, it says in on. Psalm 139, yeah. right? And every fiber of our being, God knows it's an orderly system. Yeah. So we need to pay attention. I love a simplicity of take a walk. Yeah. Take some rest. Take time to, to be grateful in your life. It can be so healing to your whole being. I think that's some valuable information. And we want to get this into your hands as well. It doesn't cost you anything. Just call the number on the screen, one 855 750 Prayer partners are standing by and request this. Protect your sleep and we'll get it right out to you as a, as a gift from us. And up next, born out of an affair and unwanted, Natasha finds hope and an identity. Powerful. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. We're here to help you discover life. Natasha Grants always wanted to belong, the child of a biracial affair between two married people. Natasha was put up for adoption at seven months old. It was difficult being adopted and trying to channel all the emotions that I felt. My biological mother did not want to take care of me. I think I was a reminder of her affair, and she struggled with that, as well as my race. My white friends would tell me I acted too black, and my black friends would tell me I acted too white. So it was really difficult trying to find my identity. Natasha's identity issues and insecurities made her lash out at those around her. I did have a lot of anger issues and a lot of emotional problems, I guess you could say, that I did take out on my adoptive mother, I think, so she got the brunt of it for the most part. Natasha still craved approval, so she started having sex when she was just 12 years old. You know, I didn't understand my body. I didn't understand you know, how to value it and what it meant and who I was. I started at a very young age, and I was very promiscuous from that point forward. Every guy I would date, I automatically had it in my mind that I had to do these things in order to stay with him. She drifted from relationship to relationship, looking for fulfillment. I really felt that I didn't have any purpose. I wasn't sure of what goals to even set if I did have any. And I just kind of felt lost and alone, and I wasn't sure what I was on this earth for. Then she got pregnant at 15 by her 19-year-old boyfriend. I felt completely numb being pregnant in 15. I was just numb to it. And as the pregnancy progressed, I did feel like being a mother would become my identity, and I would finally find myself in that. But halfway through her pregnancy, her baby's father was shot and killed. Natasha was lost again and slipped into a deep depression. Suddenly, everything was stripped away. My world was turned upside down, and I realized that I wasn't in control of anything because I think I believed the illusion that everything was in my control and that no matter what came at me, everything was going to be okay. 
Her adoptive mother helped Natasha through the depression of losing her baby's father, and the two became close. After her son was born, Natasha tried to make motherhood her purpose. She returned to finish high school and then started community college, but she still felt incomplete. Even though I felt like I was coming into my identity as a mother, I was still empty inside. I still felt like I was missing something greater, something bigger, and um, I couldn't figure it out doing what I was supposed to do, but I was still like a zombie. There was no life inside of me. I didn't have life. I just went along with what I thought I was supposed to do, and I was trying to be the kind of mother I thought I was supposed to be. During her second year of college, Natasha noticed something different about one of her professors. There was something about him that was intriguing me, and just the way he conducted himself. It was the little things, and I've never been around anybody like that. One day at the end of the semester, she asked him about it. And his reply was, I'm a warrior of Jesus Christ. He never mentioned Jesus' name in class, never said anything like that, but the presence was so strong that I could still feel it, and I still knew. They talked for a while, and the professor invited her to church. I've never been to church besides for Christmas and Easter, you know, not even every Christmas and Easter. I have always felt drawn to the spiritual world, but I would look to fill that void in things like a Ouija board or hanging out with my friends in a cemetery. I just had that hunger for something deeper. At church, Natasha felt God's love, and she knew she found what was missing from her life. There was something, a chord that was struck in me where I knew that this stuff was real and something in me just lit up and went crazy. When I got home from church, I prayed. I went to my bedroom, closed the door and prayed on my knees and said, Jesus, please come into my heart. And instantly, it was like a light bulb came on. That's what it felt like. I'm finally home and God just became my father. And there was this beautiful connection that was so deep, it was indescribable. I saw myself as having an identity in him now. It wasn't just up to me and who I saw in the mirror. It was about so much more. He looked at me and he saw a beautiful daughter of his that could change the world with his help, you know, as he worked through me. And I saw myself of great value. You know, I wasn't just this little biracial girl that was swayed to and from, adopted and unwanted. I became this powerful woman and um, he just overtook my heart and everything. The first thing she did was buy a Bible. She would read it constantly. I just was completely soaking up all the truth I could. I just loved that thing, and I didn't even understand it, but I knew I was meant to be reading it. Today, she is happily married to a pastor, and they are planning a church outside of Pittsburgh. She identifies as a child of God, unconditionally loved and forgiven. Looking back on my life, I see him everywhere. His fingerprints were everywhere the whole time, which really helps me wrap my mind around his love, too. And even though I felt alone, even though there's been times where I had suicidal thoughts, all those different things, he was there. Every moment of it, he was there. To sit here and see the big picture of what he's done since the moment I was adopted up until now, and the people he's brought in and out of my life and everything, it's just, I don't know. You just really wrap your mind around how good he is and how much you really don't deserve any of it. You know, I just love this story of Natasha, and I am sure there is someone watching today that you can relate to being either uh, having come through an adoption yourself, or maybe it's not about being adopted, but feeling unwanted or unloved in some way. I just want to say to you, your Heavenly Father adores you. He made you, he, he just sees everything beautiful about you. He loves you, he wants a relationship with you. And you know, as I was a teacher for many years and so I also resonated with this, this prof in this story and I love how he was in a classroom teaching and he saw the needs of his student, this Natasha, and he called himself a warrior of Jesus Christ. So he was just an average teacher, but he stepped into being a warrior and he was able to speak hope and truth and life and salvation into Natasha's life. And look at the transforming story that took place. So, so first of all, do you know how loved you are? And secondly, if you're a follower of Jesus, wherever you are, would you just be a warrior of Jesus? Would you just see all those people around you who need to know the love of God? I want you to call us now so that we can pray for you and minister to you in any way. We have this uh, wonderful pamphlet on peace. It is just will bring such clarity to your heart and your mind as you're seeking peace today. But let me pray for you. 
Well, Jesus, thank you for your goodness and your grace in our life, that you uh, love us so much that you come after us, that you came after Natasha through the witness of this professor, this warrior of Christ. I pray for more warriors of Jesus to be raised up across our nation, that wherever we are working or serving, that we would see people that need a savior and that we would proclaim the good news of Jesus to them. And I pray for those who need peace today to know that peace comes from you, Lord Jesus. I pray this in your name, amen. Well, up next, Brian returns with more Hope to Go. When God of all the world says, bless you, think what it means. You see, God Almighty is a God of blessing. That's what we find in the Bible all the way through. He said, and I will bless you. He wants to bless us. But how do you get that blessing? If you want blessing, there's only one way to get it. Miraculous Blessings, available now. Welcome to this Hope to Go. Today I want to talk to you about pain relief. You know, in this Hope to Go, let me give you some pain relief truth about grace, the ultimate pain reliever. Number one, the work of grace. Ephesians 2, 4, it says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy. You know, the word love here is agape, which means unconditional love. This means that no amount of goodness can make God love me more and no amount of bad can make God love me less. He loves you not because of who you are, but because of who he is. Now the word mercy here carries the idea of withholding something out of kindness. While grace means that God gives to us what we do not deserve, mercy means that God does not give us what we do deserve. Now that's good news. And so while God is just and must punish sin, he is also loving and merciful and does not want to punish us. And in his love and mercy, he provided a way to do both. And that is why grace is heaven's pain relief. Number two, the miracle of grace. Ephesians 2, 5 tells us that God made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. By grace, you have been saved. Now, this is the miracle of grace. This is why it's pain relief. The word saved is the Greek word sozo, which means to heal or to make alive through Christ. His perfect life, his sacrificial death, his bodily resurrection, God made spiritually alive those who are spiritually dead. Jesus, though alive, became dead so that we, though dead, might become alive. And that's nothing short of a miracle. But he didn't even stop there. Number three, the majesty of grace. Ephesians 2, 6 and 7 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. Now, in order that in the coming ages, did you get that? He might show us off the incompar incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Not only have we been raised from spiritual death to spiritual life, but God actually gives us, in spite of ourselves, a seat. The moment we accept Christ at the place of honor in heavenly places alongside his son. And from that place of honor, that place of no pain, the Bible says we will rule and reign with Christ for all eternity. So no matter what you've experienced in the past, your best is yet to come. Number four, the measure of God's grace. You need to get this. Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Now, Paul is saying that God's grace is full, it's complete, and no amount of good works on our part can complement God's grace. It stands alone, independent of our attempts to earn his love and favor. Even if you've experienced a painful past, again, with this truth, you can experience pain relief when you open up your heart and say, God, I receive it. Five, the manifestation of grace. This is final but not conclusive. God's grace, he says in Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace we are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So that means that no matter what you've experienced in your past, when you begin to invite Christ into your situation, the future now is going to take you into a whole nother level. 
and that's your hope to go. <laughs>Brian, it's been a fantastic show, it but been. it is time to talk turkey, my friend. Oh, talking right. turkey. It's Thanksgiving weekend, and I see we have Brian's Bountiful Harvest recipes that you can have as well. You can download them off the website. Yep. You can write to us, call us. We'll give them to you. But tell me about this sweet potato turkey delight. Well, if I tell you all of the secrets, I just cannot Come let you leave now. the I can't let you leave the studio. I see so you're going to just have to call the number 1-855-759-0700 oh. to get your copy. Okay, well I'm just caught up in the in the recipes right now. But there are some sure. yum yums in here and there's yeah. also a turkey bowl. And now this is this is lean cuisine and so you don't have to worry if you eat will you look like me. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you will actually have a slim waist and a pretty face because <laughs> we uh, we we uh, this is stuff that I've done in my own house and, and well, something that I really believe it's going to really be a, a treat I'm going to go try these on my family yeah. that's for sure and with with Thanksgiving coming up as well we want to make sure it costs you absolutely yeah. nothing and it's protect your sleep yeah. you know turkey does kind of put you to sleep it's not the football game and it's not the that's television true. and even the company but uh, this will help you out and uh, it will be a, an encouragement to you 1-855-759-0700 we'll get that to you right away it costs you absolutely Absolutely nothing. Just request it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, we want to pray for you even today. Um, just some of the areas. We had such a powerful program today mm -hmm. about how God was able to turn around a yeah. very terrible situation yeah. by his grace. Yeah, and the, I just grace pray God, for the grace right? of God. The grace of God to come Absolutely. upon you. Yeah. Father, we ask you for this same grace that you would cause, Lord that loved one right now that we're praying for, that they would understand your grace and it would surpass whatever they've gone through in the past. Mm -hmm. Lord, bring them to your favorable end. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. Well, Revelation 21, 4 says, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. That's good news. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older of the things has passed away. Amen. Until next time, God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.